Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, a huge welcome to you. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Do you like roses? I certainly do. We actually grow some in our backyard. And I was going to film outside today in my garden, but unfortunately we're still in a, uh, I think it's code orange right now as far as air quality. If you don't already know, the east coast of the United States is under an air quality alert because of the Canadian wildfires. And up until today, we've been in a code red here in Arlington, Virginia. Today's actually code orange, so it's not quite so bad. But it's actually a little bit overcast and not that pleasant outside right now, so I thought I would just film inside today. But I do have some footage of my roses that I filmed a week ago. We have some very pretty roses and they're all very fragrant. We purposely got the fragrant ones because that's the only kind I like. Of course, I'm just kidding. I love all kinds of roses. And I actually went to the Rose Garden not too long ago. We have a Rose Garden in Arlington, Virginia. It's one of my favorite places to visit. I absolutely love looking at all the roses. But we're not here to talk about gardening or roses. We're here to do a tutorial. So if you like check petal beads and other pretty beads, you're in the right place. We're going to be making that beautiful Y-style necklace that you saw in the introduction. And we're going to be using the beads that came in Sam's bead box for the month of May. Now, if you're not familiar with that box, I'll leave a link to the website down below, along with a coupon code in case you're interested. And if you missed out on getting the box this time, I'll also leave a list of all the materials, all the beads that I'm going to be using today. So you can go find them on the internet or go to Sam's bead shop. You might be able to find them there as well. And as always, I'll leave some timestamps down below as well, in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. Now before we get started let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so because it really does help my channel and it helps me to stay motivated to create more videos for you. And don't forget that I always model my pieces at the end of the video so stick around for that. And I want to stop talking because I want to jump into the tutorial so let's go ahead turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here we have Sam's Speed Box for the month of May. As you can see the name of the box is Waltz of the Flowers. If you haven't seen the unboxing video I'll link it down below. Let's go ahead and select the beads. There are so many beautiful beads in this box, guys. I wish I could make several pieces and use all the beads. But today we're just going to make one necklace and a set of earrings. And I did place the beads that we're going to be using at the top to make it easy. We're going to be using these gorgeous hibiscus flower beads. These measure 9.5 millimeters. And the color is Dreamy Amethyst Mixed Gold. These are so pretty, guys. Look at these. I absolutely love these. And I do want to use these petal beads. These measure 13 millimeters and the color is lavender amethyst with gold. These are very pretty as well. I love the color. And I want to use these melon beads as well. The color of these is teal and white silk with gold. And these measure six millimeters in size. Since we're going to be using a dark chain and the amethyst color, these will add a little bit of brightness to the whole thing. And that's it from this box. I'm going to be using some chain. And this is curb chain. As you can see, it's in an antique copper color. And I think the lengths measure three by four millimeters, but you can use any kind of chain. It doesn't have to be curb chain. It can be cable chain or roller chain, as long as the links are medium size and they're in an antique copper color. I'll be using some craft wire today, and this is by Beadsmith. Now you can use any brand. It doesn't have to be this brand, but this one is 22 gauge and it's in an antique copper color and it's also tarnish resistant. Let me show you the color. And here I have a few more items. I have some ball head pins. I also have some jump rings. These are 5.5 millimeters in size and these two are 6.5 millimeters. I'm going to use these two at the top of the necklace along with a clasp and that's a lobster clasp and I'm going to use these ones for the petal beads. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by building the strands. As you can see, I have the hibiscus beads and I have the melon beads as well. And I've also cut myself some craft wire. This is the 22 gauge wire. I recommend you cut yourself pieces that are two and a half to three inches long. If you're a beginner, I recommend three inches just to make things easy. If you're advanced, you could probably get away with less because these are small beads. And I'm gonna be cutting myself some chain segments, but I'm not gonna cut it off the spool right away. I'm gonna be creating some beaded components and attaching them to the chain before I cut it from the spool. So let me put it off to the side. Now this is curb chain, so the links are going to lay pretty flat. They're basically oval links that have been twisted, and that's going to be a consideration later on when we hang the dangles. But for now, we're just going to build the strands and we'll hang the dangles later on. Now I did make some sketches earlier on today, so I kind of know what I'm doing. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is loop this wire. So I'm going to use my round nose pliers and I'm going to grab the wire about an inch down, maybe an inch and a quarter, something like that. Kink it, 
Switch to this part of the wire. Take the tail and wrap it around the nose of the pliers. Flip the pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back. And that's what you should have. Now, before I do any wraps, I'm gonna attach it to the end of the chain. So let me open up this loop to make it easy. And I'm gonna slide the length of the chain right into the loop that I just created, just like that. And now using some skinny pliers, and these are actually crimping pliers. I like to use these because they have very skinny tips and they grab really well. I'm gonna grab the loop like this. And with another set of pliers, these are tweezer nose pliers or needle nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the end and do some wraps. And I usually only do about two wraps, but you can do as many as you want. And now I need to cut off the excess. So I'm gonna use my flush cutters. I'm gonna grab the loop again and I'm gonna tuck that little end in. I'm gonna thread one of these flower beads on. I'm gonna grab the wire again with my round nose pliers, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part of the wire, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of the pliers, Flip the pliers around and continue to wrap that tail to the back, just like that. Now I'm not going to close this loop with wraps just yet because I'm going to be attaching chain to it. So now I need to figure out how many links I want in my chain segment. And I've decided that I want five links. So I think I'm going to snip this one. And actually I'm not going to snip it. I'm going to open it up because they're not soldered links. So let me grab it. These are bent nose pliers. It makes it a little bit easier with bent nose pliers. As you can see, I have my segment of chain and it has five lengths. So now I'm gonna attach the chain to this link. Let me open it up first. Once again, I'm going to slide the link into that loop. Just like that. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess wire, tuck in the little sharp end, and I do want to make sure my loops are level. Usually they are, but sometimes they're a little bit off. So as you can see, I've connected one beta component. So now I'm going to connect the next one. And once again, I want to count five links. So I'm going to open up this one right here. It's a little tricky sometimes. But if you can save your cutters, I do recommend that you do that. So now I have another piece of chain attached and now I'm going to go ahead and attach the next beta component. So once again, I'm going to grab the wire about an inch down or an inch and a quarter, kink it, switch to this part of the wire, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, open up the loop, 
I'm going to attach it to the chain. Just like that. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the sharp end. This time I'm going to thread on a melon bead. Grab the wire with my round nose pliers, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back. Let me open up this loop. And now I'm going to attach it to the chain. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in my end. Let me line up my loops. Make sure they're both facing the same direction. And now I have two components attached with chain in between. And that's basically how you do this, guys. It's very simple. The next step would be to count five links and separate it from the main piece of chain. And then you would create another beaded component using a flower. So it's basically a repeat of what I just showed you. So now I'm going to continue building my strand, alternating between the hibiscus and the melon bead until I get the desired length. And I'm thinking somewhere in the vicinity of eight to nine inches. So to save time, let me do this off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I built both strands and each one measures about eight and a half inches, maybe eight and three quarters. So by the time I add the jump rings and the clasp, the necklace will be about 18 and a half inches long, something like that. Obviously you can make yours as long as you want. Now this piece here is going to be the drop portion of the necklace. And I haven't finished it yet because I need to attach this flower bead with a ball head pin. So let me show you how I do that. I'm simply going to feed the ball head pin through the bead. And now I'm going to grab the pin right where the bead is. Kink it. Switch to this part of the pin. Take the tail and wrap it around the nose of my pliers. Flip my pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back. Let me open it up. And now I'm going to attach it to the chain. And once again, I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers and grab the tail and do my wraps. I think I'm going to do three wraps this time because I want to make sure I cover that pin. And since this bead's at the bottom, it really doesn't matter. So now I'm going to cut off the excess pin, tuck in the little sharp end, so there's my drop. And now I'm going to go ahead and connect both strands and the drop. I have a four millimeter jump ring there. Let me open it up. I'm going to connect one of the strands. And now the drop. And now the other strand. Let me close it up. I 
I think this necklace is looking really cute so far. Of course, we're not done yet. We have to attach some dangles and I'm going to use the petal beads for that. I'm going to use all eight that came in the collection. I'm going to use some jump rings to attach them. These are 5.5 millimeters in size. Now my jump rings are about 20 gauge and that's a little bit thicker than what I want, but I'm going to try to attach them to the petal beads really carefully. I recommend that you use jump rings that are 21 or 22 inches thick to make it easier to thread them through these beads. You may come across some beads that have bigger holes than others, and so you need to be extra careful when you're feeding jump rings through the holes. So let me go ahead and attach one. I'm gonna open it up. Like I said, you have to be extra careful because you don't wanna crack that bead. As you can see, it barely fits. That's why I recommend 21 gauge. So now I'm gonna attach this dangle to a chain segment. And you may think since the chain segments have five lengths that I should attach it to the third length, the one in the middle, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna attach it to the second length from the top. And the reason is that when you have this necklace on, you want the dangles to hang so that they fall in the middle of that segment of chain, if that makes any sense. In other words, if I were to attach it to the third length of each segment, this dangle would hang too close to this bead here. I hope that makes sense. Let me just show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the drop first. So I'm hanging it on the second link from the top. And now let me close it. As you can see, the spacing is okay. I could have actually hung it on the first link and it would be okay as well. But if I had hung it on the third link, this petal bead would be too close to the flower bead. I hope that makes sense. So now I'm going to hang another one here. And if you'll notice, the curved chain sits flat. So it's going to be easy for me to figure out where to hang it. I'm going to hang it on this side. I have this petal bead on the left side, so it makes sense to hang the next one on the right side. Let me open up a jump ring. And now I'm going to attach it to this petal bead. It barely fits, but there it is. So now I need to pick up this chain and I'm going to attach it to the second link. Let me close up the jump ring. You want to make sure you close it really well. So there's my drop and I'm pretty happy with the spacing of the dangles. And that's basically how I'm going to hang the rest guys. I'm going to hang each dangle on the second link from the top of each chain segment. So the next one will be hung on this link right here. Same thing with this chain segment. I'm going to hang it on this second link right there. But ultimately you're going to have to decide for yourself depending on what kind of dangles you use. If your dangles are smaller, you may want to hang it further down or if they're bigger, you may want to hang it on the first link. The best thing to do guys is just to hold it up to your chest and see how it looks. And since these are jump rings, you can always open them up and attach them to a different link. So let me go ahead and attach all of these dangles to my chain segments and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've hung all the dangles and I think it looks adorable. Another consideration, guys, is the orientation of the petal bead. One side is concave and the other side is domed. So when you go to hang them, you need to take that into consideration. But even if you don't, that's okay too. You can have some of them facing one way and others facing the other way. That's a personal choice because ultimately when you go to put this necklace on, there's really not a front or back unless you want the concave side to face the front. Like I said, that's a personal choice. So now we're going to go ahead and attach the clasp and that's the easy part. Here are my jump rings and a clasp. These jump rings are 6.5 millimeters across. Let me go ahead and open one. I'm gonna attach the clasp. Let me close it up. And 
And now let me open up this one. And I'll attach it to this end. I feel like I'm always spending tons of time doing this, but I like to arrange my necklaces so you can see how it looks. And by the way, guys, I forgot to mention, when I was hanging my dangles, I noticed that one of my chain segments only had four links. It's really bizarre because I thought I was being very meticulous, but obviously I made that one mistake. So when you're doing this, you should always double check your chain segments to make sure you have the exact amount of links on each one. So anyway, guys, I'm pretty happy with this necklace. I think it looks lovely. I adore the colors. I like the splash of teal. It's not too much, but it's just enough to give it some interest. And I really love the petal bead dangles. Now I do have a pair of earrings that I'm going to be making. And I've already made one here, as you can see. It basically has a piece of chain with a hibiscus dangle at the bottom and three additional dangles using the melon beads. I went ahead and attached the hibiscus dangle to this piece of chain. It's the same steps that I used for the hibiscus on this drop here. And here are three melon beads. And here's an ear wire hook. I'm going to go ahead and attach it. It's easy to do it now before I attach the dangles. Let me close it up. I'm going to use ball head pins for the melon beads. So once again, using my round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin kink it, switch to this part, take the tail and wrap it around the nose, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to attach it to the first link, the one that has the ear wire hook. And now I'm going to grab that loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. So there's one dangle attached. Let me go ahead and prepare another one. So now I'm going to attach this one on the second link and I'm going to attach it on the opposite side. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Let me do my wraps. If you'll notice, the first dangle is connected to the right side of the link of the first link, and the second dangle is connected on the left side of the second link. It's a good idea to stagger them like that so that it looks properly when it hangs. Let me prepare this one now. And now I'm going to connect this third dangle on the third link down. And I want to make sure I hang it on the opposite side of the second one. The second dangle that I hung. I hope I'm not confusing you. Let me cut off the excess. Tuck it 
tuck in the sharp end. So here's my other earring. And how adorable is that? I think both of these earrings are really cute. I'm pretty happy with them. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, I'd like to go ahead and put this necklace on and show you what it looks like. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Isn't this a pretty necklace? I really love this one. This one's absolutely gorgeous. I've mentioned it before that I really love dark metals for some reason. It's not that I don't like gold and silver, but there's something about copper metals or bronze metals that I absolutely love. And of course, I love purple beads as well. And I'm actually surprised that the teal and the amethyst coordinated so well together. And my cat's actually down here. He's wanting to jump on my lap as usual. <laughs> He's actually on my lap right now. Let me see if I can show him to you. Here he is. Isn't he pretty? He doesn't like to be on camera though. He really hates it actually. And don't we all sometimes? I know I get very nervous whenever I have to film myself. I may not come across as nervous, but I do get nervous, believe me. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've inspired you. I hope you can make your own necklaces. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.